move on to questions to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And again, we start with topical questions. And I call Mr. Fra McCann. Could the Minister give an assessment of the potential for the agri-food sector? Agri-food is one of our most successful industries and is a major driver for um, success in our rural economy. It's our largest manufacturing industry, achieved sales of over four billion and contributed almost one billion of added value to the local economy in 2011. It provides around 10 per cent of all private sector employment and it's also one of the only sectors in the north which has continued to grow in spite of the economic downturn. As Minister, I was delighted that I was able to secure the inclusion of the agri-food as a priority sector within the North's economic strategy and the Executive's commitment to um, develop and implement a longer-term strategic plan for the sector as part of the programme for government. The Agri-Food Strategy Board has identified opportunities for sustainable growth and it has targeted increased employment in the sector. The Board's report, Going for Growth, contains a vision for growing a sustainable, profitable and integrated agri-food supply chain focused on delivering the needs of the market. So I'm pleased that the report recognises the requirements for all parts of the supply chain to be sustainable and to be profitable. I believe that this is something that we could all aspire to for the industry. Going for Growth has set challenging targets for the agri-food sector by 2020 to create 15,000 new jobs, to grow sales by 60% to 7 billion, to increase sales to the north or outside of the north from, uh, to 4.5 billion and also then to increase value added to 1 billion. There's a lot of work to, to do to meet the challenging targets set by the industry within Going for Growth and industry itself has had a key role to play in developing the plan and will also do so in its delivery. Industry, as I said, has had a key role to play in developing the plan and will also um, take forward a lot of the delivery aspects to it. And I understand that the board is reconvening the sectoral subgroups to agree the way forward on the industry-led recommendations. So from the government perspective, I'll continue to work closely with my executive colleagues to help support the industry's plans for expansion. Can I again, again remind members in asking topical questions that they should avoid questions that are listed for oral questions? I call Fra McCann. Uh, and I thank the Minister for her question thus far, but I know the Minister has said there's lots to be done, and I know she's brought this to, uh, to executive colleagues. Uh, but what can be done in the meantime uh, to move us along? Yeah, it's absolutely not a case that we're waiting. Um, myself and the Deputy Minister have a piece of work to do in coordinating the response from all the different departments because there are a number of key asks of various departments. The piece of work that we're involved with is, is bringing a paper to the executive which actually charts out what each department is going to do and deliver in the time ahead. However, we're not waiting until that piece of work is done. We um, already have made a number of announcements. One of the key asks in the document was particularly around access to finance for um, industry. And I'm delighted that the agri-food loan scheme has already been announced and that's going to help farmers and producers um, who are involved in integrated supply chains to be able to access finance. Uh, one, other, one of the key asks was around um, eradicating TB and I've announced my intention to establish the new government industry strategic partnership that's going to develop a long-term strategy to eradicate TB. And then also the other area that we're already moving on is in terms of developing the new rural development programme because I have always said that that's going to be a significant tool in terms of um, the department being able to deliver um, in terms of the asks in the Growing for Growth recommendations. So there's a lot of work that's um, already um, ongoing. I'm recently back from a trip to China where, again, we're out um, engaging with new markets, trying to get our, um, our local produce into those new markets. So there's a lot of work that's ongoing, but I look forward to um, myself and the Deputy Minister bringing the paper to the Executive in the near future where we will um, hopefully secure agreement on the way forward across all government departments. I call Ian McRae. Um, on the 16th of May, the, the Minister um, announced that the Rivers Agency headquarters was moving to um, Cookstown. Can the Minister update the House on what progress has been made on this? Yes, absolutely. Um, the member will be aware that um, I'm very committed to making sure that we decentralise public sector jobs, that there is a fair distribution, and I'm sure he welcomes the fact that we have um, up to approximately 60 jobs from Rivers Agency going into um, the Mid Ulster area. Um, that location was chosen for uh, many reasons, um, not least because of its central location, and Rivers Agency being an emergency responder need to be able to um, reach many areas of the north very speedily. So um, we're working our way through the progress. I've said my intention is that we'll be on site by 2015. So there's been a lot of work done in terms of the, the site at Lockery, which the department owns, and um, where we would access or where we would site the building, the new building or if we could use existing buildings on the site. So that works ongoing, but as I said, the target for 2015 is, is still a very live and real one. I call Ian McRae. 
I, I, I agree with the minister's words. That, that, you know, in her announcement that Cookstown is a prime location for this site. But will the minister not accept that there are people who are concerned that when they hear these statements, and whether it be DARD headquarters or indeed Rivers Agency headquarters that are moving out of Belfast, that they would like to see it move as quickly as possible? Can the minister assure me and indeed other colleagues and the other constituencies that, that this is progressing as quickly as possible? Absolutely. As I said at the start, I am fully committed to making sure that this happens. It is a fair distribution of public sector jobs. So I am committed to the move um, of Rivers Agency to Cookstown, Fisheries to Down, um, Forestry to Fermanagh, and obviously new headquarters going up into the, the North West. So for me, they are all very um, th there is a lot of um, work going on. I am um, making sure that officials are, um, I suppose, keeping the pressure on the officials to make sure that they are delivering. There is a lot of work to do. It's not something, this is not something you move and turn over. Um, overnight, but um, I can assure the member that progress is being made and we are working our way through the, the, to meet the target time of 2015. I call Fergal McKinney. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her replies thus far. I am sure the Minister is acutely aware of the frustrations being felt across many areas of Northern Ireland, and I am thinking of areas like the Spurns, the Mourns and the Glens over the issue of rural broadband. And what is the Department doing about this problem? Yes, and I, and I share those concerns. It's something that I've repeatedly talked about uh, in this House. Um, and coming from a rural area, I can absolutely understand the difficulties that, that are being posed. And I, I decided that I would insert myself into um, trying to sort out the problem. It's obviously daddy responsibility. However, that being said, if I'm asking farmers and rural communities to apply for things online, I think it's, um, it's only appropriate that I also should then um, try and solve a problem that, that obviously exists. So I've done that in a number of ways. Um, practically in terms of DART direct offices and, uh, and encouraging farmers that don't have access to broadband or even to computers to make sure that they use um, the DART direct offices, that they're, they're open and um, available for them. But secondly, um, in terms of um, actual financial investment, I have um, did some work with DETI and I'm putting forward five million into the, the DETI project, which is targeting areas that are, are actually not spots. Um, one of the, the problems in the past, I believe, has been that um, DARD funds in the past haven't necessarily went into the, the, or the areas of need. So on this occasion, I have made sure that I have identified areas based on deprivation statistics and where I believe the five million funding that I am putting forward should be targeted. I call Fergal McKinney. Uh, thank you. And are clear, realisable targets being put in place to achieve 100% coverage, satisfactory coverage? Um, Daddy are involved with, which I am I'm now involved with, um, clearly sets out that by 2015, um, I think it's something like 98.9% .9 of people will be covered. I'm absolutely working to that. I would like to see um, the reason that I have prioritised the areas is based on deprivation. Let's try and get a service into those areas as quickly as possible. So the scheme, um, Daddy had went out to um, tender. I believe that's all been signed off. So um, I know work is going to start immediately. I have identified the areas where I f feel that funding should um, be directed, so I would like to see um, progress being made almost immediately. I call Mr Jerry Kelly. I note that the Minister, I that the minister has uh, approved uh, funding for uh, faith-based groups uh, recently, which is a very good thing. I wonder would the Minister elaborate on um, what she sees as uh, advancing reconciliation in rural areas? In, in my view, um, reconciliation presents one of the biggest challenges for, for each and every one of us. Across some um, rural and urban areas, good progress is obviously being made, but much more needs to be done, for example, in tackling the major issues such as um, segregation. And that applies equally so in the rural setting as it does in the urban setting. In my opinion, in, the ter in terms of the past, it may well be that the best we can do is agree to disagree. In other words, accept that there are obviously different narratives um, relating to this. So I think our focus should be primarily on the future, and that should be the objective of any actions in moving forward. I would welcome ideas on how my department can be of assistance in taking that forward, particularly in rural areas. I call Jerry Kelly. Thank you, Minister, for our answer so far. Maybe she could elaborate on some in terms of practical uh, steps where you think that that could be advanced. I think um, one of the, the obvious key elements of reconciliation is, is dialogue, and, and we need to increase the conversations, particularly um, the difficult conversations that need to happen. And as I said, we clearly have different narratives about our past, and um, I think we are going to have to agree to disagree on this. But the past can't be allowed to hold us back for the future. 
We need to deliver for the people that elect us. And reconciliation, as everybody knows, is going to be a long, proce uh, a long process. But good work has already been done, and we need to build on that. We need to build on it and, and do a lot more. And if my department can play a role in assisting with that, then I, I'm very much up for that. And as I say, I really would welcome any ideas that people might have on how I can best direct funds and support from my department in taking that forward. Michaela Boyle is not in her place. I call Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister inform the House when and why the decision was taken for Animal Health and Welfare NI to take forward the bovine viral diarrhoea and Johonis schemes and why these aren't being undertaken by our Department's Veterinary Service? Well, it's, it's the um, BVD and also Johonis disease that's been taken forward with the Animal Health and Welfare Group. It's an excellent piece of work, so um, I'm not sure if the member has concerns about it, but it is an excellent piece of work that was taken forward with John Thompson at the lead of it. Um, that group was established alongside a similar group that was established in the south because obviously the key aim is to get free movement of cattle across this island. We have an all-island animal health and welfare strategy in place and that is going to be, um, I think, the vehicle for delivery and that is going to be the EU animal health law. So we're actively working towards that. There's been very, very positive work done um, with the animal health and welfare group and they'll continue to do that in the time ahead. And I know it's something that the farming community have actually very much welcomed. This is tackling a disease, a production disease. So it's not waiting to something sick, it's actually tackling it head on. So it's obviously going to improve the competitiveness of the farming industry in the time ahead also. I call Joanne Dobson for a supplementary. I thank the Minister for her answer. It's just unusual for her department not to want to take on additional staff and responsibilities. Perhaps the Minister could confirm that this is a new trend for her department of engaging the private sector and inform the House about the procurement procedures she will use in future schemes. Well, I can assure the member that I'm not a control freak. If somebody else can do it better, I'm quite open to them coming forward and, and suggesting that that's the case. And in this case, in this instance, what I've said is this group is the best placed group to be able to take this forward. It's a group that's very similar to the, to the group that's been formed in the south. It is all about free movement of cattle across this island. It is something that's very much welcomed by the, the farming community, and it is tackling production diseases head on. So it's very positive. But as I said, if there are groups out there that can provide services that need to be provided, I very much welcome that. I was a big supporter of this group, which is why I put financial contribution behind the work that they did to get them started. And we also have industry contributions, so it's a win-win all around, I think, for everybody. I call Dolores Kelly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, in relation to assisting women in the farming uh, uh, industry, what specific measures is she helping uh, uh, women to remain within the farm? I think that's, that's a, ver a very good question, uh, particularly in relation to um, given the average age of a farming community. We've involved in a lot of work around succession planning, so it's actually going in, talking to families, talking about what's their plans for the future, and that also, in, on every occasion, would also involve um, mothers and sisters and, and others in the house. Um, so I'm very much involved in, in taking that work forward, but also through, um, through a lot of the Access 3 funding, through a lot of the, the rural development funding, we've had um, a lot of rural businesswomen being able to bid into the programme and being successful um, for, for their projects. So that's all very successful. I also attend a number of rural women's um, network events so we can um, talk to rural women about what are their needs and then shaping the supports from the department. There are quite a wide range number of, of issues and initiatives that, are, initiatives that have been taken forward and I'm happy to provide it to, to the member if I haven't covered them all uh, in, in the answer. I call Dolores Kelly for supplementary. I would be grateful to the Minister to actually provide me with more detail around the specific measures. But in, in terms then of widening out uh, those measures, in terms of then rural poverty, uh, what analysis has the Minister's Department made in relation to the impact of poverty on women and any uh, detriment then it is to them to go into the farming industry? Yep, and, and as part, the member will be very aware, um, given our time on, on the committee, that um, I had taken forward a £16 million package for tackling poverty and isolation. And quite a lot of work was done there around how do we target those most in need. That includes women. So in all that analysis, um, women were part of that. And we did take forward some um, fantastic projects. And I know £16 million doesn't sound like a lot on the scheme of things. However, it was leverage funding. We were able to put forward some money that attracted other departments then to, to match fund or, or um, do projects that they necessarily wouldn't have done um, in the absence of the £16 million funding. So there's been lots of positive work and, and also in terms of childcare, I know the member has an interest in childcare with the Bright Starts initiative that's been announced last week. There are a number of um, specific 
um, rural measures in terms of childcare, that I'm, which I'm um, committed to taking forward, three in total. And that, that's around you know, social economy enterprises in terms of childcare. It's around creating additional places, and it's around practical physical support also. So there's lots of um, positive work in terms of rural women um, being taken forward in this department. And that is the end of the period of topical questions. And we move on.